help our team meeting. We bring it up our sponsor. Again, we can't do great things without great people. So John with DR Org, thanks so much for being here. Did it oh, I didn't know my last. I've seen that. Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Oh, yeah. hey, guys. Um, my name is John. I've met some of you in other places before. Met some of you this morning. Uh, I work at Dr. Horton here in Charleston. I work with Tara over in Carolina Groves. I know a lot of y'all, especially if you've been doing this for a long time, you already have your go-to Dr. Horton rep, which is awesome. Nobody's ever trying to poach any business from anyone. Uh, we were happy to provide breakfast. Tara and I split that in the interest of rewarding the people she normally works with. And of course, so I can meet people like Sammy, new <laughs> team, stuff like that. Um, we last year had very few communities. Uh, I want to say we had five, and at one point, I think we had six, and then we closed one out in Monk's Corner. We're about to have 14. Wow. wow. Um, we are opening this coming week. Um, my other presenter that was here with me today, China, and somebody else saw her in earlier, but she had to go because she had an appointment. She'll be working in Founders Corner, which is in downtown Lincolnville. I'm not sure if y'all seen any emails or anything on that one. Those are going to be upgraded homes, um, Charleston style, 3,000 square feet and above, um, starting around 450 or so. Um, amazing homes. Um, they already have a couple that are spec out to be done by December. And so in that community, we will already have the end of the freight down. down. Sir? Yes. Um, and we'll have the interest rate on those down to 4.5% as well, even on those wow. upgraded homes. Um, in addition to that, we have three other communities coming from some of those as well. Uh, it should be open by November, maybe January. Um, Pine Hills, we are still going. We have another new phase out there in Cane Bay. And they did open up that back road out to 176 from the back of Cane Bay. It's a little bumpy right now. They haven't quite paved over that little pump. Just the open, or we're just, I live there, so I, I somebody used... moved the cones and I drove down at the other end. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't know whether, uh, did whether the cones are going up. I don't know who moved the cones, but I, I drive by there every time I go to Pine Hills. I'm like, I'll check and see if they've opened this road. And I saw there were no cones, there's a little bump at the end, but yeah, that's yeah. it. Six minutes, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. And not having to make that left for yeah. black yeah. Tom. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, so a lot of great options out there. Um, Tara and I focus on Carolina Groves. We're at 150 homes now. We'll be at 650 in two years. Um, we are rapidly building out there. We have about 87 townhomes that we're currently in the process of building. And tell us where Carolina Groves. Not everybody knows. I'm sorry. sorry about that. It's in Monk's Corner off of Highway 52. Uh, I like to say in between Goose Creek and Mount Pleasant. <laughs> but that's what I tell people. <laughs> Highway 41 is right in New York. Highway 41 is right there. So that's that's something I tell people. <laughs> it's quiet, serene, and you're right in between those two. Berkeley <laughs> 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 County West Pass, it doesn't matter. Yes, yes. Not quite as low as Cane Bay, but nowhere near. Like we have our Santee community and we have our Holly Hill community. Both of those communities are great and we have lower home prices, but you do have a higher property tax out there. But that's something we try and work around. And we make sure to always have the lowest interest rate in those communities for that reason. Aren't you guys opening up one um, off 26, like between the next exit and the um, Minneapolis? Yep, that one's going to be called Sheep Island. Yeah. It will be open sometime soon. We're still working on it. Uh, we're still working on preparing lots and buying lots. That's going to have the first eight homes. It looks like we're doing about three entry level. And then <coughs> after that, we're supposed to be building all next in style. So it'll have a garage off to the side of the home, a standalone garage with double front porches on the homes. How big is that neighborhood going to be? I want to say 174 lots. Detached or or. It's going to be all detached, no townhomes. So right now, the only townhomes we should have should be the Carolina Grove in Monk's Corner and Pine Hills in Cane Bay. Um, we also have the new Hollywood neighborhood has officially opened, and that's right down the street from Ravenel. So we have two communities right there. Um, the Ravenel community has moved extremely fast. We're still waiting on ETO to close those homes. 
Um, but we continue to buy the interest rate out for buyers no matter what. We'll always do that. So that's at no cost. And of course, for some of y'all might be other builders might do flex cash where some of it goes towards closing or if they want, it'll all go towards their interest rate. We just do the interest rate on its own and we still give your buyers at least 7,500 in closing costs no matter what. Um, so they don't ever have to worry about the interest rate. And that doesn't come out of cost or anything like that. So whenever you get a price from one of us, that's the price. <laughs> and of course, we try and sell based off payment at DR Horton because we know we're, we know we have the lowest price and we have the lowest interest rate. And so when we sell against other builders and we try and get you to bring your clients in, we're going to show you a payment that's lower than anyone else's hopefully. <laughs> so um, I have some maps that I'll pass out with our uh, upcoming communities. Um, it's going to show you where all of those new flags, as we call them, are. I also printed out a couple yeah. of these. We are currently in the last we're in the last week of our red tag sale right now. So this has some interest information for your buyers. Not only do we have the 399 interest rate and 4.5 interest rate in some communities, we will do a 2-1 buy down if you'd like, which would mean your first year your interest rate would be 2.5%, second year 3.5, and then the life of the loan 4.5 after that. Um we have the communities listed in here, and these communities are going to have the price of some of our homes alongside square footage and bedrooms. And some of them are a lot of them have already sold, which is going till um, the end of October. So we're almost there anyway, but I want to bring it anyway. Um, until Sunday, we're paying 4% commissions on any homes in that list. And then at a standard, we always pay that 3%. Also, now Donald's glass is coming out. <laughs> you said four percent. <laughs> you didn't get that email beforehand. Twenty-five percent every The the first week of October, we did seven percent commissions. If you didn't get that email, uh, I have a card for you, and you shoot me an email or a text message, and I'll make sure and email you every single week to let you know what commissions are, where they are. Um, like I said, not to steal your business from anyone. Just happy to help. Any business that comes my way is good business, and if you bring a buyer and sell with Kara. They might have a friend who might call me. What are the like <clears throat> lot sizes for most of these? Every community is different. Uh -huh. Carolina Groves, you're gonna be looking at <laughs> 0 0.2, 0 0.2 of an acre, uh, 0.25. We have some homes out in Carolina Groves. When we first started, if everybody doesn't know, DR Horton does three levels of home, if you will, an expressions level, which is your first time home buyer. That's rolled vinyl floor. Um, it's you know granite countertops, so on and so forth. The next level up is platinum, which is going to have quartz countertops, shower doors, pendant pre wires, and LVP flooring. Uh, the new Founders Corner in Lincolnville is going to have a couple different options. That's going to be our tradition series, and so that's going to have fireplaces. It's going to have pendant pre wires. It's going to have really nice light lighting fixtures, LVP throughout the home, oak tread stairs, so on and so forth. And then the Sheep Island that you were asking about off 26 is going to be our Emerald Series, which is where your buyers are actually, if they want to pay the full interest rate, they can come in and design their own home, just like a true or toll or anything like that. <clears throat> or if they'd like, we will spec out some of those homes with upgraded features that we've gone ahead and picked out. And then if they wait until 60 days before it's ready to be completed, then they get the lower interest rate as well. But then you got to choose somebody who's like, hey, you can have insanely upgraded home. You might not pick out the options, but trust me, they will be great options and still get a low interest rate. Um, and some of the communities like Lakeview, Kitfield, or Holly Hill, those are going to be third of an acre lots. Um, Holly Hill, uh, Ravenel's got some pretty decent sized lots as well. And uh, Cane Bay is Cane Bay. Everybody knows Cane Bay. Uh, any, any questions? I know you're not, I think, they're poaching clients, but if you were, what would you say about yourself? Uh, <laughs> your contact is not there. That's Tara. Tara's. That's Tara. She's, you know, she's who she is. She's got, her, she does a lot of business. I will say, if you need, ever need anything and you call me, my phone does not ring more than once. I answer it. Uh, I'm happy to help anytime, any day. Today's my day off, but we all work in real estate. What's a day off? Uh, you know, when the phone rings, you, you answer it and you go do what you can. Um, that's what I'm here to do. I'll try and be friendly. And uh, I like helping people. 
Uh, I came from General Brokers myself in Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, was fun to break into. And then when I moved to Charleston, and I knew I was going to start over, and I didn't have any uh, contacts, I went to DR Horton because I thought new construction, get people to come in. And uh, I didn't do any research on builders, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, and I just took the first job that I saw at DR Horton, which has been a different experience from a lot of other builders that I've seen. But I've gotten to help a lot of first-time home buyers, mm -hmm. which has been a truly rewarding experience. Um, since we own our own mortgage company, DHI, that's why we do the lower interest rates and everything like that. Um, we're constantly in communication. My loan officer sits in the next model over. So whenever you call me, I'm right beside Dan and Steven. We help your clients. We talk to them every single Wednesday. We get their loan process done. I sold a house in Cane Bay on October the 2nd. And I am closing on it tomorrow. So 22 days, 25 days turnaround on loans if we want. Um, awesome. And she's never bought a home for it. She's 23. Wow. Pretty cool. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, we'll 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great meeting. Good luck. Thanks Thanks for so sales. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Good, to Good to meet you. All right. All right. Let's say something nice about each other, something we can brag about ourselves. What do you got? I'll start. So, oh, go ahead, here. It's wonderful to have someone in the front desk, to have Brooke in the front desk. There we go, Brooke. We're excited to have Brooke. We're excited to have her. Um, Mine, I sat with Ricardo for uh, like three hours in Nexton last week, <clears throat> and I just listened. Like where <laughs> in the parkway and he was working and I just listened to him work and the level of service that I would, he provides his clients is incredible. Uh, when they wanted to see a property, he called the agent, asked the agent a ton of questions with writing things down. And I was, he was, he was a student of the pro of the property in the house for his clients. And it got to the point where he was talking to another agent about what's coming up. And he's like, Oh, they're not breaking ground on that community until May of 25. And I said, how does he just retain this much for his clients? So filling your bucket, the level of service you're providing your clients is, is incredible. So good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Any from the chat? I don't think so. Oh, no, we have a one chat. Oh, gosh. Did we have, what about fall festival? No, we're good. Anybody? Jan, go for it. It was amazing. Yeah. How many people were there? Almost 1,600. Thanks. Yeah. So. I want to, I really need to thank leadership. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank everybody for getting that put together. It was remarkable to see that many Keller Williams agents with their clients and their kids. It was thank you for providing that free event for everybody to be there. That was a, that was just one of the most unifying things y'all have done. Well, Kristen, Kristen and how we did with that is we will feel those ripples for months. And the exciting part about that is when those ripples start to slow down, they're going to do another one. Right. Okay. And because of the success of that one, I can only imagine that 1,600 people will be doubled. Jan told me that at <clears throat> the Fall Fest last week that she said, you you guys got to be prepared for this to be double in size next year. So yes, absolutely. Which the venue can hold that. So I think it was our first year, so we learned a lot. Um, but it, we are so appreciative of y'all putting it out there to your clients. Heard nothing but good things on it. So we're excited to spend time it for next year. So it was held in Goose Creek Pumpkin Patch. The um, West Farm Corn Maze West in Farm Monk's Farm Corner. Farm. Yep. Monk's Corner. And we had a hundred and a little shy of 150 agents participate, and we had 2,400 signed up. Um, you always have dropout on that, um, so we had about 1,600 people show up. And it was, it was awesome. how many? How many agent? How many client referrals did you? Oh, uh, we didn't have that number, Ben, but we did have a referral giveaway. We as also well. had a referral yeah. giveaway, so we were collecting. They were collecting referrals. Uh, for a five hundred dollar gift card for your clients, I think Jackie has That's his one. client mm -hmm. one uh, yes. five hundred dollar Halls gift card. But uh, there's a there's a jar filled with uh, client referrals that 
Brooke and Kristen are sending out. And all of those client referrals are going back to the agent that that client was associated with. Yeah. So it's so not weekends. We yeah, so you'll get those referrals shortly as we continue to go through the entire list. And then we're going to do some fun things with tracking different production. We already know that there's been more than four or five uh, contracts that have been created just from the conversations people were having about that event. So this is a huge thing to be able to take advantage of, especially when we think about continue to lead generate into 2025. So you'll see a lot of these events, probably three a year coming up, that everybody is going to have the opportunity to take advantage of. And here's the biggest part about this. Like, the biggest piece to this is you had to do absolutely nothing in your job, which was talk to your clients, because Tristan and Holly, they created smart plans that went out with all of the information. They have even created smart plans for all of your clients after the event to follow up with people already created for you. You have to do nothing but, but push send and call your clients, which is really graphics what, and sign up yeah, for and, tracking and, too. So and the call asking for a referral when you know I say, hey Jan, this is Ben, you know, anybody interested in buying or selling, that call is always heavy. That phone weighs a lot. But if I call Jan and I say, hey Jan, we're having a client event. Would love for you and all of your family to come oh. out. It's totally free. And you can win a five hundred dollars haul gift card. That's a lot easier. Yep. Yeah. So one thing we also say. heard too was like for the individual agent, it's sometimes really hard to put on an event like this <laughs> and being able to say, Hey, come to this fall fest and there's 1600 people. It doesn't look like such a small event. You might want some more intimate setting events for maybe your VIP list, but this looks really great on y'all to have a ton of other people there too celebrating. The last piece that I'll say to it is if you do run your own event, take the same model that we ran. We, we were able to generate 1,600 people to an event with a one month lead time. So with the model that we've modeled for you and already created editable, let's call it graphics and smart plans, you can take those exact same things and do it for your own business. And that's the game, right? So we'll continue to do things in the lead generation space to model what it can look like for you to take it, add your own creativity, and and create a lot of business and hit your goal. So awesome job. Thank you. Right, let's move to the next one. Welcome, Brooke. Welcome. Yeah. We actually Brooke prepared a five-minute speech about her. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's welcome her and I'll stare open eyed on it. No, 30 minutes. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Brooke, um, it came to us from CFC, graduated from CFC in May. Yeah. Um, and her first day was actually Fall Fest, so we kind of threw her to the wolves on that one. Um, and she has done an amazing job. Stop in and see her. Um, do you want to say anything about? Yes, that? I'm very excited to get to know everyone. Um, I'm very excited to be here. I love the team already, so very very excited. And it's nice to meet all you guys. Awesome. awesome. Good. All right, well, so. No, she's no. not. <laughs> this is our video um, of Fall Fest. We're going to put this out for agents to share as well. Getting one thing tweaked, but I just want it just with the logo on there. But I wanted y'all to see this as well um, from Fall Fest. It's our little promo video. Hey, everyone. We, we are so excited to be coming guys. to you from the West Farm oh, Corn Maze, where we're having our first annual Keller Williams Fall Festival. We have over 2,400 people registered for our 450 agents, and this is a great opportunity to support the local community as well as just have a great time with our agents and their clients. Yeah, we see this Fall Fest as a great opportunity for our agents to really thank and build relationship with their past clients for their business, having the opportunity to build a relationship with them now and into the future. So it's going to be a great event. Yeah. Man, I think we did good for it. All right. Let me three miles. Like three mile walk. Yeah. yeah you can do it. Hey everyone, we are so excited to be coming to you. Hey everyone, we are so excited to be coming to you. It's right there.
So you'll get this video. You get all the smart plans. You've already probably got the smart plans that we signed up. So take it, use it. We'll use it on social media, the whole nine yards. So make sure you find it on social media, tag. We have rights stuff. to the video, so you're allowed to use it on your social media as well. So awesome. So yep. we'll have it to be able to send out to your clients. If you yeah. Want. So business planning clinic is coming up. So who's taking business planning clinic? That's That's the police. Police. Who has? Who has? Uh, Joseph did it last year. Mm -hmm. Joseph did it last year. We got Kent Temple. Kent is an operating principal up in the North, in the uh, Lake Norman, Charlotte area. He's also a mega agent. He has a huge team up that way. It's master faculty, which means one of 42 uh, individuals within our ecosystem, 180,000 that are the top trainers in the entire company. He travels all over the place. He does a lot with business planning clinic. It's something that's a passion for him. And this, they re, they've kind of remodeled it and re, uh, reformulated business planning clinic. Still the numbers, right? We all understand that Patrick's in the math, so there's still a lot of numbers. If this is a great opportunity to start to think about 2025, set your goals and understand how many units and how many appointments you have to go on. And then the next step is how many people do I have to have in my database? What's my lead generation plan, right? You'll have all of that done in a one-day session so that then you can start to put your 411 together. Who knows what a 411 is, right? One goal, one annual goal, one monthly goal, and four weekly goals, right? That's an accountability tool that we use so that you know exactly what has to get done and the big rocks that you have to push through the end of the year and into 2025 so that you can live biggest life you, life you ever have and hit all of your goals in 2025. So this is 100%. If you do absolutely nothing until the end of the year other than talk to your clients, please do that. This is what you should be at. Last year, I think we had something like 100 people at this event. And the last thing I'll say about business planning clinic, it's not designed to just write down the plan and put it in your drawer like we all usually do, right? It's a living, breathing document. As you're going through the year, things change. Life comes up, business changes, markets change. So this is all about set the plan and then have something so that you can adapt as the, as the market adapts and you can still hit your goals. So this is going to be an amazing, amazing event. If you know where you're headed and you have to make an adjustment, then you know when you take a detour. That's right. If you never have a plan, you don't know if you've even taken the right road. A hundred percent. How do you know where you're going if you don't know where you're going? How do you, you can't put a plan together. We have to set a goal, create a plan, and then add accountability so that we hit our goal. I think the statistics are something like you're 40% more likely to hit your goal when you write it down, right? 40% more likely. However, the biggest statistic is that you're 77.2% more likely to hit your goal after you've written it down if you add accountability. It's a very big piece. And everybody thinks accountability is oh, such a bad, crazy word. Accountability just means somebody next to you that is helping you see your blind spots, helping you through all the challenges that are going to exist when you're when you're on the path to making your goal. So this is a great, great event. Ben, you have anything else to say about this? Yeah, so uh, I was trying to find a quote, but the, we all... With the path being in the math, like this has said, we build the plan, we do it. The only reason we're not hitting our goals or living the life by design that we want is because we're inconsistent with our actions. We made a plan. We knew that if I do that plan, it will always work. If I do that plan, but then I get to July and June and people are saying, I did it. I'm not on my goal. And it's like, well, because you did it, honor the commitment you made to yourself and those who depend on you. That's the, that's the difference. When you build a plan, we know that the math works. We've got 180,000 agents that we can take the numbers and put it together. We've got national statistics. Build a plan and then be honorable to the, the, the commitment you made to yourself and to everybody that depends on you. And that's the only reason, because we all have the perfect plan, but then life happens. And I want to go to the grocery store at 9 a.m. instead of making my dials. And the, and the biggest piece to this, too, is you talk a lot about activity, right? Get in the activity. Get in the activity. Activity, is, activity. we know, according to the 80-20 principle, not all activities are created equal, right? Activity is there to create productivity, not just activity. And what Business Planning Clinic also helps you do is identify the right activities to take on a daily basis. And what's funny, you'll realize you end up doing less than you currently are doing. That's the game. We don't have to do as many things as we think we have to do through a day to hit our goals. 
assuming we're doing the right activities. So that's what this is all about. It's next. All right, somebody else. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'll talk on this. Our next team meeting, we are doing a dip off. Um, it's the Palmetto Bowl. If y'all are not familiar with Palmetto Bowl, it's Clemson versus Carolina. So we're doing kind of a tailgate theme for um for the next team meeting. Um, and so you'll bring a dip and everybody will kind of vote on this. So just one dip. Um, and from there, we're also going to have a charitable side of this. We're just seeing the needs as far as Asheville goes. If we're going to do local or Asheville, um, we will keep you all updated, but um, stay tuned for more details on that. But it's going to be fun. So mark your calendar. November 21st, it's going to be at the Park Circle venue. Um, and we're pretty excited about it. So Is there anything to warm food up there? <clears throat> Likely you'll, they do have a commercial kitchen there, but if you need to like bring a crock pot or something like that, um, you might need to bring that. Yeah. So, and all right. Day is three days after. So feel free to also bring gifts. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> I awesome. All right. <laughs> Also, so hurricane relief, this is going to go coincide with Molly's class on Monday. The biggest need they have right now in Asheville is asking for gift cards for gas for people to hand out to those that are donating back uh, or handing out for donations, driving around, helping people. So if y'all are coming to Molly's class or if you're not, you can bring it to one of the office locations and we can make sure we get it to Molly. Our goal is to be able to send Molly back with a good bit of Visa gift cards um, to take back to her people in Asheville. All right. Yeah, what we're hearing from the from them up there, like yeah. Jeff and Hannah and Molly, is that the donations have been absolutely amazing. Yes. All of the clothes, all of the water, all of that. That's a, it, it. It has been overwhelming for them to the point where they're actually asking that we don't keep sending donations and that we give in a different way, specifically through gift cards and money donations through KW Cares as they continue, because we're not a distribution network. So as they continue to figure out where, what end is up, um, then maybe we'll start the donations again. Yeah. However, right now they're really asking for gift cards because yeah. I think they're still having some serious. The other, correct. Yeah. And the other side of it, he mentioned KW Cares. You also can add that to your transactions in command. We'll send out a video again about that reoccurring transactions um, that can be allocated for hurricane relief as well. So Every we know fall. that it's been hit. We've been hit hard too. So we want to give back to Asheville and help them in the best way we can. So mm -hmm. that being said, skill set reset is also on Monday. Um, we have about 60 right now. People signed up. We moved it to the Cooper River Room. This is going to be a fantastic training. Um, Molly is a bold coach, dean of case for. Um, do you want to touch more on this too? Okay. Um, and she's just going to be teaching um, just a good reset on the skills. Um, you know, you're in a bad mood, just show up. She'll, yeah, she'll make she, it <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, Molly, has anybody gone to anything with Molly? She's, yes. She's become a mentor. Yeah. She's just an amazing person. Yeah. And um, she has an amazing garment collection too. But <laughs> <laughs> Molly is just like salt of the earth. Yeah. One of the most amazing individuals you'll ever meet. But her passion for helping people grow through real estate is like nothing I've ever seen. And her the way she articulates really simple concepts and helps you get into action is also so like something I've never seen. Yeah. So she's going to go through mindset as well as skill set, how to marry the two, yeah. and how to ensure that you're hitting your goals in 2025. So we're obviously really into this space of okay, what are we doing right now to set it up 2025. Perfect. All right. All right, Ben. <laughs> All right, Ben. Let's talk some numbers. All right, who wants to make an extra $45,000 next year? Well, 45449 uh, You can sure. figure out the tax plan. I know it's for you to figure out. Yeah. Um, so we were looking at the numbers. So why do numbers matter? Why are they important? They drive everything. They drive everything? What else? They tell you where you are. They tell you where you are. 100%. They drive everything. They tell you why, where you are. What, what else? Anything else? It's measurable. It's 100% measurable. They don't buy at all. Right? The path is in the map. Like, this is just what it is. 
they give us a, they help us understand where we currently are and then the changes that we have to make in order to go where we want to go, right? The other thing is they tell a story. Numbers tell a story about the choices as well as the activities that we've taken in the past because we know that a lot of the numbers that we're going to be talking about today are lag indicators, which means they've been created from activities and choices months ago because everything in real estate is 60, 90 days lag, right? Everything is in arrears. So when we think about numbers and we think about the story that we take, we know that the story is the story of this agent base. Right, 415 agents in our KW ecosystem in Charleston. And these numbers that we're going to go through is exactly what the choices and activities is the culmination of the choices and activities they make. Right. So we can say we like this or we don't. We can measure that number based off of metrics, which we're going to go through, and then identify what opportunities we have to change our behavior, our thinking, our habits, right? The conversations that we're having. Does that all make sense? So, so when we went through this, we were looking at our closed units and listing state, right? We all know that listings, what do they say in the millionaire real estate agent book? What are the three L's? Leads, listings, leverage. Leads, listings, leverage. That's 100% right. And it's so funny. That book was written in like 20, in 2003 or something like that. Right after the crash. Yeah. Nothing's changed. All of the core concepts in that book, I get asked all the time, like, when should I hire an assistant or um, how do I create more leads, right? I always chuckle because the answer is in one of those 350 pages <laughs> almost every time. It, it's so it's so funny to see it played out in real life, too. When we look at everybody knows Sean Cleary, who's been with us for now two years, who has a, a page published in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Playbook. We made five hundred thousand dollars his first year. We'll make close to seven fifty this year. Nine hundred. He'll hit a million this year, maybe. And if you look at Sean Cleary's business, it is he hired an admin, he's hired a second admin, and he's focused on three lead generation pillars. So the agent in our organization right now who's had the most recent new success is just running the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Playbook. Yet we still think there's a different way. Yeah. And what's really cool, most of the time we will hear something for the first time or we'll hear like a new model, right? And the immediate reaction from ourselves is, well, that's not going to work for me, right? Every time, right up. And, and then what we'll probably do is we'll probably seek evidence that we're right. It's called a story model. So then we'll go and seek evidence that it's not right so that we can disprove whoever it was that told us that this model actually works. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to get to a space where we're going to be like, huh, that might actually work for them, but not totally for me. And then eventually when we get into action, we're going to say, holy smokes, this actually works. And that's when everything changes. And then the last step is we forget that we were even told about it. And we actually think we created it. Right. So when we think about Sean, Sean, Gary Keller always says you can have anything you want in five years. Sean wanted to go and create a million dollars in real estate. Most likely that guy's going to do it in three. So it's all just the it's all just about the input and then the model that you're following. So it's really cool. Anything else to add to that? Yeah. No, I think that's perfect. So when we look at this, we're gonna go through our closed units or our listing statement. We talked about um the millionaire real estate agent book. What percentage of our business, according to the millionaire real estate agent book, should be from listings and buyers? What percentage from each? 50. The answer is right here. Health. Right, so a healthy business in real estate should be in an agent business about 50 50 percent from listings and 50 percent from buyers. How come? What do you know? Guaranteed business listings. Well, for every one transaction, Vince, there's two sides. That's right. For every one transaction, there's two sides. Now, on page 102 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Book, we know all of the, I think it's six or seven reasons that we should focus on listings. You can control your money easier. You control your time easier. It's actually a more leveraged activity, right? There's a lot of other reasons. However, listings truly do drive the business. And I heard there was a lawsuit earlier this year. Did anybody hear about that? I don't know if you've heard about that. This, I think it's NAR. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I have it. I have it. Gnarly. I have it. Gnarly. I think that's what it is. G-N-A-R. Yeah, something like that. So the NAR settled. 
right? That entire thing was around transparency and around commissions, correct? It went backwards. It, it did. Totally, and yeah, we can all have our own opinions on it. Yet, this is what happened. Now we get to adapt. And right? has the world stopped spinning yet? No. Not that I've we seen. thought it was going to. It's still spinning. Yeah. But what's really cool about it, right, is when you have the listings, what do you control? Compensation. Mm -hmm. You've done the hard work. You control the product and the compensation. The two most important pieces to us in the transaction, right? So when we looked at our business, we looked at it, we said, all right, through September, all the way through September this year, our ecosystem, so you amazing agents, have closed 2,267 units so far this year. Not too bad. That's almost five, eight, that's almost five units per agent. That's incredible. Yep. The average five, five units per, per agent. We're a little higher than that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Which, which we know from it's talking with the, Anton and John this past week that um, more than 50% of our entire real estate community have closed less than two. Just random numbers are smart. It's crazy. Crazy. It, it is fascinating when you look at that. Now, I think about that and I say, look at the opportunity for me, right? I heard something the other day around follow-up, right? And I think the, the statistic, I'll read it to you exactly. It was fascinating statistic around follow-up, but well, I can never get to it, but essentially. Well, you're, well, you're pulling that up. Oh, you, can, oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. So the... So 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up attempt. 44%. Sounds pretty goofy to me, but all right. 92% of salespeople give up after the fourth attempt. What percentage of sales have to happen after the fourth attempt? Oh, 80%. 90. 90. So... What you're telling me is that if I follow up more than four times, then I've removed 92% of the competition. Well, hell, I just have to call you four times. I just have to call you two more times. Yeah, that, and because I removed 92% of the competition, and you think you think your database, the names in your database, and the people in your database are in somebody else's database. There's 6,500 agents. You think they're in somebody else's database? Stand out of people. Yeah. But we know 44% of them are only talking to them maybe once. And we know that 92% of them won't talk to them more than four times. So if I look at just that simple statistic, what do I have to do? Talk to them more than four times. And you will always be the real estate agent. It's the craziest concept I know. And it's it's so simple that we want to complicate it to justify our inactions. I encourage you to just stop doing that. Just call them and say hello. Invite them to the Fall Fest. We're going to hold three, maybe even more events next year that you can easily <laughs> invent. She's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> well, I'm kidding. So it's going to be awesome. So uh, we are... So listings taken. Yeah, so listing we've taken uh, one thousand one hundred twenty nine listings. So, oh. <clears throat> congratulations on that as well. And we're up year over year more than the market in listings taken. That's awesome. Guess what else we're up from an agent based standpoint? We're up in year over year growth in closed units, where the market is down one percent. It's pretty much flat. I think I've seen some numbers between one and three percent down. Right, we're up. Not substantially, but more than 5%. That's awesome. That's great. That's great, right? In a challenging and different market environment. And from a listings taken perspective, we've taken 1,129 and sold 763. Where's the red flag right now? So just in those numbers, what story did you just get the opportunity to sell? Yeah. 68. Two stories, you're right. One of them is... There's an opportunity in our listings taken to listings sold. We're at sixty-eight percent pricing. Pricing. What's the what's the de desired metric? Because we want to measure everything to a metric, right? 
What's the desired metric of listings sold to listings taken? 75? 100% would be ideal. Ideal, yeah. And I, and I, yeah. I'll, I'll kind of echo uh, Alan's comment. The best piece of advice I ever got in real estate was a guy from Nathan Batten. And there was a, the, there was a listing, 5885 Munger Road. And this listing had been listed by every single real estate agent in town. And I was 22 years old. My truck broke down. I was in a lowered Chevy S10 painted black that had to be jump started. You had to roll with the windows down or else you'd get lightheaded. And I pulled up to this listing. And it's, you know, it, it's a 10,000 square foot house in a neighborhood where the, the average price point was $120,000. We were going to sell this thing for $1.2 million. And I went out there and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell your house. And because they've gone with every other agent, they let the kid with the lowered Chevy black S10 get the listing. I had my friend's girlfriend dress up as a photographer because I couldn't afford the photos. And I said, just take photos and pretend that you're a real estate photographer. And she did. And I promised these people every single week, I'll meet with you Wednesday because Nathan back told me that every single house sells. It's just a matter of who signs in the yard when it does. Every single house sells. It's just a matter of who signs in the yard. And the reason is because we communicate and we're honest with them. And if you communicate consistently and you're honest with them over time, eventually your sign will still be in the yard. But a lot of times what happened eight other times is those agents said, all right, it's not selling, I'm done. Because what had to happen was you had to find a four leaf clover, hit a hole in one, win the lottery all in one day for this house to sell. Well, we fast forward 18 months after meeting with them for 30 minutes every single Wednesday in their house. And all of a sudden I'm, in, I'm an hour away, I get a call. We've had four showings. We had to call the police because the house had been, they had broken through the gate before. It was a nightmare. I get a call. I have to drive an hour. They said, we want to see the house. I drive an hour. I get to the house. I'm sitting there Sunday watching football. They're an hour and a half late. They keep telling me, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm like, oh my God. I'm 23 years old. Remember, it's Sunday. I'm watching football. I would rather be doing other things. But they come in. They see the house. It's a 10,000 square foot house. They're in it for about 15 minutes. They walk out. They don't say anything to me. I said, well, that sucks. I get a call from Natalie that night, the other agent. She says, Ben, I've got great news. They want to give you a full price cash offer. They also want to buy all the furniture in the house. <laughs> she said, they're going to get, they're going to close in 10 days and we're going to give you three months occupancy. I said, I said what? <laughs> Swear to God, true story. I called the owner. I said, Hey, uh, Mary, this is what the offer is. She goes, what do you think? I said, I don't think it's real, but we're going to take it. <laughs> 10 days later, they showed up, they wired the funds and we closed. We found a hole, we hit a hole in one, found a four leaf clover and one water on the same day. She said, at the closing, what are we supposed to do? I said, you're going to go open it up another bank account and move that money elsewhere. <laughs> but sure as shit, three months later, they moved in. And it was just a matter of every house sells. It's just a matter of who signs in the yard. So 75%, yes, but with consistent, con honest conversations, it can be 100% because they want to sell their property. Yep, 100%. And there are... And pricing, we've seen that pricing right now has become a challenge. There are what I think we're what's our inventory at now? Somewhere around four thousand. A little over four thousand, right? Which is great. And what's uh, months of inventory is around what now? Three, three. Around three. What's a balanced market? Six. Six. And what's a buyer's market? More than seven. More than seven. Six to seven, they say, is balanced, but nothing in life is balanced. So that's a very, like, a natural market. Or a natural I, I, market I, is very true. We were talking with Anton the other day. I think we're going to challenge that principle. I think the market has shifted, and I think that a balanced market is now four, yeah. not six. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. It's just the market fractured uh, when uh, COVID happened, and I think that those parameters don't apply anymore. Yeah, that could be the case, right? Right now we have new barometers. Which we're, which is why we're also talking. When you look at other countries, or when you look at lead markets across the country, so like a Phoenix, a Charlotte, um, not really Charlotte, but a uh, Austin. Austin, Texas, right? Dallas. There's a few others. There's a couple in the Northeast. They have already dramatically shifted to buyers' markets. Yeah. Now the big difference here is the population and the population growth. I think that 40 a day number is still an actual real number, which is mind boggling to us, right? However, there are some other variables that take that to take into consideration in that buyer versus seller market piece. However, we definitely know that it's shifting. But in tactic seven of shift, what are the four things that matter in the marketability of a home? We know it's price. Price, condition, availability. Price, condition, amenities. And there's one more. Location. 
location. That's right. Right. Those four things. We can't change location. Right. And condition and amenities are going to determine our price. But we have to go back to our pricing strategy to ensure that we're not chasing the market the wrong way. Or that we're chasing it the right way. Yeah, or that we're chasing it the right way. However, and this statistic still holds, for if there's a price drop, how much longer on average does that house stay on the market? Shoot. Two to three times longer. <laughs> Two to three times longer, right? So pricing, especially in a market like today, is so much more important because the tra the trajectory is of the of the price is going the opposite way than it was in 2020. 2020, you could price it too high, but in a week it was going to catch it. Yeah. Now you price it too high in a week. Now you are a little further away from where it probably should be. The issue, the challenge is in, in the listing presentation, if you're competing with other agents, someone will, someone will buy the listing. Say, That's oh, right. Yeah, I can get you that. And, and so the script that we always use is I, I say, Alan, I, I understand that Vince said that he can sell your house for five fifty, dollars And if he can, I'm very excited for you because that's $25,000 more than I think I can sell it for. But my question for you is, if you do decide to use Vince, at some point, I assure you, he's going to ask for a price reduction, and it's probably going to come in around five twenty-five. And at that point, I'm going to ask you to sign a termination and list it list it with us, because I hope he can sell it for five fifty. I really do. But what it sounds like he's doing is he heard that I'm going to sell it at five twenty-five, and he's going to come in at five fifty, build a relationship with you or not, and then in three weeks ask you to drop it at five twenty-five, and you lost you lost time on the market. Yep. So. Can you make that commitment to me if you do decide to list with Vince? Another strategy, right? That's a good strategy. It's a, it's a really cool strategy. <laughs> and essentially what's being exposed in this conversation is that the standards and expectations that we set with our clients on the front end when we're sitting at that kitchen table are even more important today than they ever have been, especially because the value of the real estate agent has been challenged. And that's not just a feeling thing. That is just a fact, right? However, 97% of individuals are still using real estate agents and prefer to do so. That's great. That's a great stat, right? That actually went up 1% from the year prior, mm -hmm. right? So if we go into this a little deeper, we know that we want to be at a 50-50 split between buyers and sellers. So if that's our desire, should we just decrease the amount of buyers we're doing business with? Please say no. Absolutely not. We want to then adjust our lead, uh, our, our conversations, our lead generation uh, pillars to ensure that we move up our listings number while still servicing the amount of buyers that we're servicing. And hopefully that continues to increase as well. So when we look at our lost opportunity of listings, meaning the ones that we didn't take, and if we did take them, we'd be at 50-50 in balance between buyers and the sellers. Ones sold. And the ones that we sold, thank you. We, we need 371 units. So if we were to reduce that down to a money figure, and a dollar figure, our average GCI per unit right now is 12,555. Pretty lucky to be in this market. That's awesome. Times 371, that's $4.6 million. In lost opportunity. In lost opportunity income. To our agents. To our agents, right? And here's what's really cool about it. We know the deal is there. It's just a change of the conversation and the approach to being in front of the list and the seller rather. Does that make sense? We know it's a, you don't have to go and find who else is going to buy or sell. This is just a change in our approach, right? Because you're already doing the activity. Well, go ahead. We've already done the activity. So I want to touch on this. We're, we actually are taking a 50-50 health score. So we're taking the exact amount of listings as we are for buyers to be at a 50-50 health score. So there's a couple of problems. We, one, need to be getting in front of more listings because if we're going to stay at 68%. We need to do more activity on the front end. And what we just talked about is we also need to have tougher conversations with our clients. 32% of our clients need to have more honest and direct conversation. So then we will look at our agent count of 412 we said, all right, that's $11,307 to every agent. Should we all go and take 0.8 more listings, 
right? And so one more home. Okay, that's great. Here's the reality of the situation. We honestly know not everybody will do it. That's just a reality. We also know that Pareto's principle shows up in everything that we do. The 80-20 principle shows up in everything that we do. Everything from, uh, I just looked at agent production this morning from in the entire board, 80% of the production in the board, 20% per, 20 of the agents in the board, it's actually close to like 15% uh, attribute to the 80% of the production that's done in the board. When you look at like the clothes in your closet, you typically wear 20% of the clothes in your closet 80% of the time. I mean, it's a goofy statistic that shows up all the time. So if we were to take that goofy statistic and say, well, 80% of that production, that lost on for 6 million, is going to be done by 20% of the agent body, that would be 3.7 million available to 82 agents, right? How much money does that equate to then? 45,449. When we think about these numbers, like when you hear that number, what goes through your head? When you hear about just one more list, what goes through your head? doable it's doable mm -hmm. it really is it's i think that's the greatest it's so doable it is so doable he's not even an agent with us yet <laughs> yeah right. well, you should become one because you're gonna go you may as well just take off <laughs> it, i mean it and it all comes back down to the choice right yep. what are we doing to protect the one thing that matters and that's talking to our clients when we look at this, or we look at the percentage of the agent base that isn't producing or hitting their goals compared to that agent base that is, it is close to, I mean, it's a crazy statistic, but it's all because we're choosing activities that don't matter. I would encourage everybody to write down one simple question. What should I say? What if I stopped doing, nobody would notice? What if I stopped doing, nobody would notice? And then when you write that down, just stop doing it and confirm that nobody noticed and then do it with other things that you're doing. Because we're probably spending time instead of investing it in the right activities, if that makes sense. I, I did this exercise with the agents in Charlotte and I said, all right, what is our job? What, is, what As a real estate agent, what is our job? Sure. These aren't trick questions. There's only five or six things. It's just one. What is our one job as a real estate agent? That's selling percent different, okay. right? <laughs> to sell a house. That is our job. Our, we got our real estate license to do what? Sell to sell houses with a high level of service. That's it. Who do we sell those houses to? People. Hey. Nailed it. Jackie on fire. So our job <laughs> is to do what? Our job sell is to do what? Great. Two people. people. So if I don't sell, if I'm not, selling houses to people, I'm not doing my job. So if I want to sell more houses, what do I need to do more of? Talk to more people. Talk to people. So then what is the core job of a real estate agent? Talk to so anything people. else is not your job. Am I wrong? No, you're right. So what is our job as a real estate agent? Talk to people. So if we are not selling the amount of houses that we want to sell, what is the problem? Not talking to people. People. We're not talking to enough people. And it sounds so simple, right? And then it becomes like, what stops us from doing it? It's, why do we do the 80% typically? We always get sucked into the trap of the 80%. It's easier. It's easier and it's noisier. It's always loud. And it doesn't say no to us. No. It's not telling us, no, I'm not interested. Right. It doesn't hurt our feelings. But nothing good came in. Right. And so when we just focus on the things that we need to do on a daily basis and we do that stuff later, the, the change in your life will be dramatic. And when we dialed it down, we realized that the change in your life could be somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 grand, which is pretty unbelievable. In addition, in addition to what you're currently doing. So as we close up and we move to the next slide, the, the next question is really like, how do we do it? Wait, you said I thought it was slide. the Maui thing. Sorry. 
No, you're good. Front, okay. Yeah, that was the front slide. So you think about how do we do it. There's a lot of different ways to do it, right? But Ben, like, what are the highest probability listings out there? So the highest probability listings are the people that are already telling you that they're selling. Who is that? Nailed it. Who else? Expired and terminated. That's the 32% that we're losing. Who else? Those two are going to be your highest. The next are going to be the people that don't live in the property, don't care about it. We call those advocacy owners. The next one are going to be distressed owners who, guess what, have to sell their property. Neither the bank's going to sell it or you are. And, here, and, and then you hear all those, right? And we know they're the highest probability listings. But I guarantee nobody wants to call them, right? There's a very small population of the agent base that does want to play in that space. But where are the rest of the listings coming from? Because we know that six, I think it's like 68% of clients use the real estate agent that was either a past client or referred, right? So the other percentage, great. So if I don't want to play there, I know that only 30%, I know that 30 some percent, let's call it 30, 30% 30 of the population is going to use a real estate agent because they played in that space. Fizbo's expired, it's all that stuff, right? But if if I know that 68, 70% of consumers have used a real estate agent that was a past client or that, or what, yeah, as a past client or referred, and that's the space I want to play, what do I have to do in my database then, because that's where they are, to increase my conversion rates? And at what, what conversion rate is a database? 6%. 6% of, uh, if you take 100%, if you take 100 people that you communicate with on a systematic basis, 36 touch, 6% will buy, sell, invest, or refer you to somebody that's going to buy, sell, invest in real estate. And there are a lot of different methods. <clears throat> events, right? Page 138 of the Millionaire Real Estate to book, really? But there's events, right? You can, you're DTT to the entire thing. But what I would also suggest is do things within your database to create curiosity and doubt. So you want to create curiosity and cast doubt. What is one of the biggest challenges and objections that you're currently hearing on listing appointments right now? Why would I give up my 2% to buy a 7%? There you go. That's a good answer. That's a great, that's a great question, right? Do you have an answer to it? Can you solve that problem? Sure. You can rent out your 2% investment. So you're telling me, Alan, that I have an opportunity to leverage the equity, and I think it's something like 80% of people have... Uh, 80 per, are you talking about the interest rate or... Oh, that was the interest equity. rate. There's equity. some it's crazy like, statistic around equity right now, too. Right? 80% of Americans own their house outright. Yeah, but, but if you're a high earner, it will give you some tax advantages. Ooh, so what... In just his wow. example, right, that was one common question or one common objection, yeah. I'm sorry, in a listing appointment that Alan's heard. Are there any others? Is it a good time to list? Should okay. I wait till after Is the it, election? Should yeah, I wait should till I, after the first of the year? Absolutely. There's another. What do you say in that? Do you have a do you have an objection hand over to that? Yeah. I, I, I said, well, would you rather compete with one house? in your neighborhood or 15 homes in your neighborhood there you go that's a great objection handle it any others any we get the point right there's a there were two objections my point is now take the objections that you're hearing all of the time because what that's telling you is they're not the only person that has that objection most of the time we hear we think that our problems are unique when in reality they're just common problems unique to us because we've never heard them before or never solved them before. Yet, we know that those are common objections that we have an answer to and can solve for our clients. The video. What if I said, what if I was to create a MOFR, a make offer for immediate response, that appreciated that objection and that problem? Because what do clients really want from a real estate agent or a service professional to solve their problem, make them feel good? What if I was to take that problem that I hear all the time? solve it in a in a solvable way, in a creative way that creates effortless experience for them, and then market the hell out of it to my database. Would that get clicks? Would that get people to have a conversation with you? That yes. The answer is yes, it will. Because you just went straight to the fact that, hey, they probably have doubt around or curious about this particular problem. 
So when we think about this number, we think about taking one more listing next year. I would encourage you to go and look at all of the conversations that you've had with listing with sellers last year or through September this year, right? And write down the most common objections that you've heard. And then below that, solve the problem. Solve it, detail it. And then below that, write a one sentence, just write one sentence that shows them how you solved it. That's marketable, that's interesting, that casts doubt, that creates curiosity. Put it into an email and push send. And then in a month, tell me what happened. Shoot me an email if you try it, which 20% will, right? If you try it, shoot me an email and tell me what the results are, because I'm curious. I bet that it works, that you'll get somebody that talks to you. Because I know that on average in this room, this room has about 250 people per at the very bare minimum in their databases. What's 250 times 6%? Well, that's that's what the answer right there is that there are 15 transactions. Everybody in this room, knowing our average commission is $12,000, should be making a minimum of $150,000. So the only reason that we're not is because we're not communicating in a systematic way and talking to people. Right. That's the only reason as to why we're not hitting that goal. So as we wrap up, give us just give us two ahas that you've heard. And if Zoom's still there... Zoom, drop or, an aha or two in there. Or a the limiting track. belief that we're leaving you to still have in this room. I challenge both of those. Yeah. An aha, like, oh my God, I have to do this. Or why are you not doing it? And Zoom, please do the same. What we got? Any ahas? I'm totally all right with. It sucked, and I'm not going through any of it. <laughs> we'll just keep on seeing the unbalanced business. Just do, just do it and shoot out the email. Let's see what happens. What's working now? Do the Nike of real estate. Yeah, just do it. Since I had my class was packed uh, before this, so I'll, I tell a story when I teach that class. Uh, Cody Gibson, just do it. Uh, who knows who Cody Gibson is? Cody Gibson is the most handsome guy I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, he's also a real estate agent. And when I first joined Keller Williams, he tells this story about when he got his real estate license. And if you don't know Cody, Cody had to uh, pay his mom $75 a month in Alaska to live in their boat in their front yard because they couldn't afford it. He wanted to stay at school with his friends. So this guy had nothing. He was born and raised with absolutely nothing. And he gets his real estate license because he's excited. And he doesn't want to sell paint anymore. And his broker said, uh, we'll go door knock. And so Cody said, all right, I'm going to go door knock. And he tells the story so much better than I, but he builds this. He builds this. And he says, I'm going to have the best freaking market analysis in this neighborhood in ABC plantation. And he's got this whole thing drawn out and it's everything. And all the information he goes to Staples. He buys the best paper, gets better ink. He prints it off and he's got a stack of 100. He goes, I can't wait to door knock. And he puts him on his desk and he goes right there. And a month later, his broker comes in. He goes, hey, Cody, how you doing? What, what are those? He goes, oh, that's those are the flyers I made for ABC Plantation. I'm going to go door knock. He said, that was a month ago. What the hell are they still doing on your desk? He goes, I don't know what to say. His broker goes, what the hell are you doing? Go say anything. <laughs> so Cody says, all right, you're right. I'm going to go. And he takes those flyers. And a month later, because the numbers aren't accurate anymore, he goes into the neighborhood. And he sits out front of the front door. And he's like, all right, I'm going to do this. And he waits about 15, 30 minutes. He's like, all right, I have to do it. And he walks up to the front door with his flyer that he made a, a month ago. And he knocks on the door. He says, hi, I'm Cody Gibson. I'm a realtor. And he walks away. And the guy says, hold on. It's funny you came here. We're actually thinking about selling our house. And Cody walked in there, listed that house, and got his first sale. And then he says, anything works, nothing doesn't. So what Vince just said doesn't work, that's fine. But chances are it is. Because right now, you're not sending an email to your clients. It's a huge opportunity. Anything works, nothing doesn't. I don't care if you don't know what to say. Just say, hi, I'm Ben. I'm a real estate agent. The way I started real estate, Dave St. Kier, who Vince made me thank for my career, uh, gave me a sheet of a thousand names and numbers. And he said, just call these people, ask them if they're interested in buying, selling, investing in real estate. Eventually, somebody's going to say yes. And then you ask them when they want to meet. And that's the same exact thing. Here's something interesting, though, is 
<laughs> very telling. So this said uh, they were selling some product, whatever yeah. product, insurance or whatever. And the, the salesman used to get, you know, a hundred names when they used to call and they were not excited about it. So the, the management said, well, let's tell them that those hundred names are hard prospects instead. Love this. And they started calling and having that much better success rate because they thought those were free for potential prospects and they were exactly from the phone book. No, no <laughs> different. No, 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 just the perception <laughs> that those are good and these weren't yeah. Yeah. changes the attitude of the call. And what I they, didn't, what I they didn't said to me, yeah. they said to me, he goes, eventually you're going to get two yeses and you'll make $10,000. And at 22 years old, I'm like, I get two yeses, I made 10 grand. I didn't realize I had to actually like list the property or anything, but <laughs> it, it goes to that point. It worked. I know teams that literally at the end of the year, they will take all of the dead leads. They'll, they'll relabel them Zillow, give them back to the team. And the conversion rate of those leads is higher than the average conversion rate on the team over the entire year, all because of belief. And that's another great point. Believe in yourself. You don't believe in yourself and take it from me and Ben. Steal our belief in you, but do something because everything works, nothing doesn't. So lastly, we have a listing competition coming up. This is going to be awesome. We're giving away, giving away everybody's ears perk up. Kristen said we're not. We'll announce it at Molly's class. So I, it is a very, very <laughs> cool giveaway. Yeah. It's a very it's a weekend special. Cool. It's a weekend special. <laughs> yep. Yes. I'm just kidding. It's not a weekend special. <laughs> It's red roof in off 17. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we'll be announcing more details at Molly's class on Monday. Um, but we're gonna have a listing competition for those who go on the most listing appointments, um, and then who secures the most listings as well. So we're excited yeah. about it. It'll start teams, November 1st. Yeah. Teams, individual agents, everybody yep. can participate. However, there are some things within the competition, within the rules, that are going to make it an even playing field for everybody. Yeah. Right? So participate in this. You have the opportunity to make or get a great couple of prizes. Here's the thing, though. It's so goofy how competition tends to motivate people, right? The big win here is 100% you will make more money. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of whether you win this or not. Think about right? it. So absolutely not. And what's the, what's the stat? What you do now shows up in? 90 days. 90 days. 90 days. So to have a killer first quarter. I love it. All right. Humble day business right. volume. Right. Right. For killer. daring for to there you go. <laughs> secure lunch, give us one thing that you're proud of people on your team for. Um... Adapting through like all the new changes that we've had this year, especially with like the NAR changes, um, our, we're signing more clients. We went from like a 40% signed meant to sign to like a 70% meant to sign, and we're signing more people on less men. So, love it, love it. What did you think? What was changed? Um, just really feeling confident with our process and in the field. Um, and really adding a lot of value and making sure the client has a great experience for meeting them on the field. Love that. Love it. So those Love are the two biggest things. Client has a great experience. We have the ability to add value um, and just being confident with what we're doing in terms of the process. Awesome. Love it. Go crush the day. Earn the weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I came in looking very nice. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was like, listen, you're not walking in here and getting nuggets around. <laughs> What's up, lady? All right, let's end this. I think you might have to stop.